My name is Lizette Mibo. I'm originally from Congo. Uh, I was born in Kinshasa and been living in the UK since age 14. I have been modeling for 14 years and I'm on the founder of Passion for Motherland. I've always uh, had a passion for modeling since a young age, but uh, as we know, most parents, they want you to sort of focus on your education, and which I did. And when I graduated in 2011, and also after having my baby, of course, then I, um, then yeah, I just felt a sudden passion. You can't explain why you want to do something, you know, that you are passionate about. You just sort of have the urge, you know. I mean, growing up, friends, family, even in schools, they would tell to you, you look like a model, you should be a model and stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, so after graduation, I just started having the urge, like, okay, let me just sort of explore this industry. So I went ahead and found a, a modeling school. I trained, got good feedback, and the rest is history. My biggest inspiration in the, in the modeling industry, I mean, I, I would call them maybe my idol or someone I look up to. There are a lot of beautiful models out there. I mean, supermodels, obviously those who came before us and, you know, stuff like that. But what particularly attracts me to um, a public figure, I would say, model is that like someone who have actually used their platform, their talent and their visibility in order to create something which is bigger than them, whether a company or whether a good cause and stuff. But on top of my head I'll go for someone like Tara Banks, for instance. You know, Tara Banks has, you know, turned her, her name into a household brand, you know, from the Tara Banks show to the American Next Top model, you see what I mean? So that, you know, because obviously modeling is a short career, yeah. So and then it tends to end. But then again, it's about creating something that will carry on, even though your career has ended, but something that will actually carry on. So, and then obviously when it comes to humanitarian, there's also a lot of models who have actually used their platform, which I'm also now trying to do, to use my platform um, now to kind of give back to my country and create project that's going to, you know, um, benefit the children in the Congo. Short career highlights, I would say so far. It has been, um, you know, uh, gracing covers of a couple of magazines, um, Tropics magazine in South Africa, you know, Amina magazine, uh, as most of you may know, uh, in France and Belgium, I have actually graced that three times in three years. Zen magazine um, here in the UK, you know, um, Diva Scribe and all these other inside spread, you know, Pride magazine and so forth. So it's been a very a great journey. And um, for awards, um, in 2012, I was awarded Best Female Model of the Year at the BEFTA Award uh, here in the UK and following the, and then the followed year, 2013, the Congolese Achievement Award. And yeah, so it's been, it's been great, surprising, you know, something that starts as a passion and, you know, you work hard and, and you start getting recognition for that, you're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Early this year in January, I was invited for the University UW See, in Wales, basically it's a private college, like a boarding school uh, for students, you know, college, colleges, uh, 15 to 17 years old. So yeah, actually a friend of mine who was also invited and recommended me, is like, okay, you know, we have a great story to tell, how about you come? So yeah, uh, and the theme was living on the edge. So literally, uh, I have to explain my life story and literally what it means to living on the edge, meaning that I had to combine it with challenges in life in general, part of my journey, whilst I recounted my journey from Congo to, to here and, and the challenges I have faced along the line, along my journey, for instance, coming in the Congo as a teenager, you know, not be able to speak English and starting a secondary school and then a year later I had to set for my GCSEs, you can imagine. Um, and then from that, then having a baby and going to school, study and finishing and then now coming to the modeling industry, which is very challenging and demanding, having to balance motherhood and, and, and modeling and, and career. So it's very, very difficult, but that's what it means to live in the edge, always on the edge, it always had to compromise. And so, but then the joy in that is, after the pressure, after the hard work, after the struggle, you manage to achieve something. That's what I, I went to share with the students and also obviously tapped in a little bit about my uh, project in the Congo, Passion for Motherland, where I believe motherhood led me to modeling and modeling led me to the Congo cause, you know, so yeah, amazing. Yeah. Passion for Motherland, it was founded in 2013. 
as I'd mentioned, you know, um, as a young Congolese myself, being given the opportunity or a platform, you know, to do what I do, which most of the time involves the public, you're in the public eye and stuff. And now, um, so in 2013, me and a couple of my friends, we sat together, I'm like, I know all these things that's happening back home in the Congo, um, what can I do in order to participate? What can I do? How do I help? How do I support my people back home? And the answer was obviously to use what you know, what you, you know already have the opportunity, which is for me obviously the modeling industry. Then I was like, okay, I'm gonna put together a fashion show, and uh, live music, uh, poetry night and fashion show. And the money from the ticket sale, then we can obviously donate that to an, an existing organization that is already working in the Congo. So we did that the first year. Hmm. Great turn up and then we're like, okay, let's try to do this yearly now. So yeah, three years down the line, last year we supported uh, Pansy Hospital in Goma. Um, and yeah, so it's been a very great journey. And then um, in, in December 2015, I traveled back home in the Congo in order to say goodbye to my grandmother who actually brought me up whilst my mother was getting ready to bring me in the UK. She passed away unfortunately. Um, so whilst I was there, literally the situation of street children in the Congo, the homelessness, we're just everywhere you go, you know, every city, every place, it's like you're seeing them on the street and stuff like that. Then I'm like, it's very disturbing, you know, and then I went ahead and start researching, start reading books and stuff like that, reports, and then I came across um, um, a, um, a statistics that says there's over 25,000 children roaming the streets of Kinshasa alone, not Lubumbashi, not Goma, just Kinshasa. So that's very alarming. So literally, Pasha of Motherland, which was now the annual showcase organization, we're now going to turn around and start working with homeless street children in Kinshasa and our annual fashion showcases will be raising the fund to actually support the project with uh, the street children and motherland is a, a country of, uh, of of some the native country of somebody where they come from land of the ancestors you know where somebody come from so for instance where you come from um, here for those who are born in the UK the English obviously England is their motherland you know when we go across our neighbors we have Rwanda so um, those who are born in Rwanda you know um, that's their motherland so literally um, Yes, we're starting in the Congo, as it's always important to start at home. You see what I mean? We're starting at home, and from home, then we can also branch out. And the more support we get from people, the more people support our vision, and so forth, then we can also sort of... Because you see, the, the situation of street children is not only even in Africa, even here in the UK. There are, there are organizations, uh, street children in the UK here, and also other parts of the world, Asia, you know, uh, when we tap into South America. You know, there are, there are, it's all over. So, uh, and we also living in a world that where is everything is interconnected, and yeah, so the sky is the limit. So we're not only limiting in the Congo; we are definitely Congo, Africa, and everywhere else. For the future, right now. Um, just keep working on um, the current project, which is then going to have future results, the way I look at it. So for Passion for Marvel, and as I came to mention, uh, we started off as an annual fashion showcase. Now we're going to then tap into, start to work with, uh, working with uh, street children, where we're going to start our accommodation project, shelter for street children project. So from getting a land and start building and then, put, and then start the education project. And so that's going to take a long time. It's a long term, it's a long term goal. And for myself, it was continue to learn, continue exploring and, and finding ways in which I could grow and, and continue in my career and, and serving my people, of course, yeah. <laughs> so far, I mean, um, there's a lot of individuals that have supported uh, fashion showcases and obviously the media platforms and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of people, individuals, I would say for now, that have sort of supported us uh, either financially, morally and so forth. So, But there's a lot of supports to come and we already start tapping into contacting other organizations or other companies that can sponsor us or, you know, donate and stuff like that. So yeah, we're working on all of that. But so far, from the uh, past three years, we just have been having like individual uh, people helping out, those who bought the tickets and, and stuff like that. So yeah. So I'm on Twitter, at Lizette Mibo, my full name, Lizette Mibo. Um, on Facebook, Lizette Mibo. On Instagram, 
Lizette Mibo. So, and you can also also tap into my website as well, www.lizettemibo.com. You know, send me a message, say hello. I'm very um, approachable and friendly. So, yeah, just drop me a line and let's connect.